Cassandra. I need you to bring me some clothes to change and some novels for me to read. When can you come next? What? I just went to visit you the other day, didn't I? You should have asked for those at that time. I don't have time to visit you multiple times. Unlike you, I'm busy. I have to do housework and I have to go out with people at work too. And the hospital where you're hospitalized is in the next city. So it's far away. It's such a waste of time. Besides, I've been busy with your hospitalization procedures and such. So please let me take a rest. I'm exhausted, Thomas. Come on. I broke my arm in a car accident, honey. Can you at least be a little considerate? You're my wife, so you should at least come to visit me once in a while. I visited you. I brought you everything you needed the other day. It was really heavy and I had a hard time. Besides, you can borrow clothes to change from the hospital, right? Why do I have to bring you some clothes from home? You should just shut up and put on your hospital gown. Well, you have a point there. I'm going to be in the hospital for a while, so I feel more comfortable when I wear clothes I usually wear. Don't be so selfish. You're a grown-up, right? You can do what you can in the hospital by yourself. Don't be so naive as to expect me to come visit you every time. What are you going to do if I collapse from fatigue? In the first place, you are capable to do everything by yourself. It was always easy for you, wasn't it? Oh, and if you can't do something, ask the nurse to do it for you. That was before I got hospitalized. I can't move my arms, so there are a lot of things I can't do. So why don't you at least support me while I'm in the hospital? If you think I'm lying, come visit me. I'll show you how hard it is. Jeez. Okay then. I'm too busy to visit you, but I'll deliver your stuff to you by courier service. You won't have anything to complain now, will you? I'll make sure to deliver all of them. So will you inform me again about those stuff you need? You know, you've changed a lot since a while ago. Seems that you don't love me anymore. You didn't come to see me right away when I was involved in a car accident. And you never tried to come to visit me yourself either. It's like you just had to do it because you were asked to. If you were the same person I know, you would have been a little more concerned about me. There's no way you would have said that you'll deliver my stuff by courier service. That's not true. I'm worried about you. But I don't think that rushing to you right away after the accident or visiting you every day at the hospital will make you get better right away. It's the doctors who are going to fix you, not me. Well... I know that I won't get better right away just because you come to see me. But if you were the same old you, I think you would have been more worried about me unconditionally. I've been feeling that you've become cold lately, but I feel it more now that I'm hospitalized. Why are you treating me coldly? If I did something wrong, please tell me. If you don't tell me, I won't know how to improve myself. I've been trying to give you as much freedom as possible so that you don't get stressed out. Are you really bored in the hospital? Will you stop complaining like that? It's making me feel upset. Please find another way to spend your free time. It's not like that, but it's true, isn't it? It's just that things have changed and you weren't the same person I know anymore. I feel lonely somehow. Things like that change with time. We've been married for three years. Most married couple will change after spending several years together. It's normal. We're not the lovey-dovey high school lovers anymore, so give me a break. Of course, it may be normal for a married couple to change their attitudes, but don't you want to be a married couple who continues to love each other? Yeah, whatever. Oh, by the way, I'm going on a trip next week, so I won't be able to reply as often as I'm supposed to. That's why, please don't disturb me with your nonsense blabbering. A trip? For heaven's sake, I'm hospitalized, Cassandra. I didn't know that you're going on a trip. Well, that's because I just told you. Well, it's perfectly fine to go on a trip, but please think about the timing. You're really annoying. My timing is perfect. You just have a broken arm, right? Things won't change with or without me. You're just overreacting. It's just a little pain on the arm. I can't leave the hospital anyway. We are a married couple, so at least tell me who you're traveling with and where. 
You're such a pain in the ass. Do I have to tell you everything? Hawaii! I'm going with my co-workers. That's all. Satisfied now? Colleagues? Do you have any colleagues at work that you get along well with? In addition, you're going to Hawaii? Wait a sec. Are you telling me that you're going with a guy? How rude of you. Of course I'm not going with a guy. I have someone whom I get along well with at work. Anyway, I'm going to Hawaii with that person. Can we end our conversation here? I have some errands to run. Robin, long time no see. Hey, Thomas, long time no see. I heard that you're in the hospital now. What happened? I was involved in the car accident. Nothing serious, but I'm crippled for a while. By the way, Robin, you're in the same department as Cassandra, right? Oh, your wife? That's right. Cassandra said that she's going to Hawaii with her colleagues. She didn't clearly say who she was going with. The atmosphere was different from usual, so I thought I'd see if I could figure it out. A love affair trip to Hawaii? Oh, come on. Stop joking, dude. But if she's really going, I have a feeling that she will probably go with James. You know James, don't you? We were together in the previous department, remember? James? No way. Have you heard something fishy about my wife and James? Well, it's been rumored that Cassandra and James get along really well. And they're both taking a vacation leave next week. Somehow, I feel even more uncomfortable after hearing your story. I see. Thanks for letting me know. No problem. I think you should take... Good day, Thomas. Good day to you too, James. You look tired than usual. Are you busy with work? I spend most of my time sleeping nowadays. How's your broken arm, Thomas? Well, I don't think it's a big deal. It seems I can move my arm as I want now, thanks to the rehabilitation. Glad to hear that. As I told you before, I'm quitting the company next month and going back to my parents' house. Thank you for your help. I'm calling to inform you about that. I see. I can't believe your father suddenly got sick. I'm really sorry to hear that and wish you and your family all the best. Thank you, Thomas. You too. Please don't force yourself too hard. Can I ask you one thing? My wife seems to be having an affair with her colleague. Adultery? That's surprising. How did you know she was having an affair? Did she say something about it? Or did you hear about it from someone else? I was in the hospital and she said she was going on a trip to Hawaii with her colleague. When I suspected her, she tried to end the conversation right away, so I decided to ask another colleague of mine. Then my colleague told me that he knows the person my wife has an affair with. There's no smoke without fire, right? No way. Maybe it's just a rumor and you shouldn't bother about that. I want to think that it's a lie too. But if it's true, I'm going to file for alimony against my wife and her lover. I have plenty of time. Oh, Sorry that I brought this topic out of the blue. I am so surprised that I've lost my words. But you're in the hospital and I thought it would be hard for you to gather evidence. Well, I'll figure something out. Even in the hospital, you can gather more information than you think, you know. Insurance money from the accident and settlement money will also come in. Oh, okay then. But please, take care of yourself. Thomas, your wife died in an accident. Huh? What are you talking about? Cassandra is supposed to be in Hawaii right now. You may not believe it because it's so sudden, but the police told me earlier at the company that she died on a trip. Is it true? What? Are you talking about the police in Hawaii? Lying is not good. If you're joking, you have a very bad sense of humor. 
I heard she was involved in a car accident in Hawaii. It looks like your wife's bag was found at the scene and that's how they identified her. Wait a minute. I'm totally confused here. Are you really sure about that? I know. I can understand that it's confusing. One question I have is why haven't the police contacted me? Normally, if it's an accident overseas, the embassy would contact me or something. I wonder why I haven't received any call yet. I don't know why, but maybe you're in the hospital. I haven't heard anything from my wife's parents either. Isn't that strange? My wife's family should have contacted me if something happened to Cassandra. Which police department called you? I just heard about it from another colleague. I wonder which department made a call. Speaking of which, what are you doing at the office? Didn't you say that you were going to quit so you could use your paid leaves? That's right. It just happened since the paperwork was incomplete. Anyway, it's true that your wife passed away. How can you be so sure? They haven't even found her body yet, have they? How can the police declare that the person is dead just because her belongings were found at the scene? I don't know the details. Well, you didn't make the call, did you? Who at the company told you that? I'll check, so let me know. I'm sorry, I don't remember since I was so shocked. You must be pretty upset that you can't even remember the faces of the people you worked with. I see. Well, I'll ask the section chief then. If that's true, the section chief would have heard about it as expected. You don't have to go that far. You're still in the hospital, so I'll do some more research on behalf of you. That's enough. You're lying, aren't you? Why should I lie to you? I've been working with you for two years. I know your habits. You used to say that when you tried to hide your mistakes at work. If you don't know, you always say vague things that you don't remember. You are too obvious. Really? I don't remember that at all. Look, you're using the same words again. Could it be that you're Cassandra's lover? No way! I'm not having an affair with your wife! Well, if you ask the company or the police, they'll know right away. If you want, I can call the embassy to find out more about the details. If you're not doing anything wrong, why would you lie to me by telling me this story of yours? Since you're ignoring me, I'm sure that you were lying to me. What have you done, Thomas? I can't believe you sent pictures of the affair and stuff to my parents. Why do you even involve my parents in this kind of private matters? It's disgusting that you would do such a thing. Why don't you just tell me directly? Pictures of the affair? So you admitted it? I'm convinced now that you were having an affair. Thanks for the obvious response. No, I didn't. That's enough. Excuses are a waste of time. James, right? I had my lawyer to do the further research, so I know all about it. I've been contacted by the embassy too. They said there's no evidence of you leaving this country and there's no evidence of any American who got involved in a traffic accident in Hawaii. What did you do then? It doesn't matter. It does matter, Cassandra. You faked it because you didn't want to pay for the alimony. You almost got caught by me, so you think you can just pretend you're dead before I find out? That's foolish. I'm really tired of your way of thinking. There's no way you can pretend you're dead. You're very immature. It's your fault. If you hadn't insisted on asking, none of this would have happened. You wouldn't have even noticed. That's why I had to make up a cover. I had no choice and I didn't want to go that far either. Well, you better stop living with your head buried in the sand. It's not even a cover. That's just a joke. Then you're even dumber for choosing a woman like me. Just by being a little nice to you, you fell in love with me right away. 
I can still remember that delirious look on your face. Seriously, it's just so ridiculous. I only married you because you have a high income. You're an idiot for not realizing it. I don't love you even a bit. When I heard you were involved in a car accident, I wanted to divorce you right away. You're just a burden to me if you can't make any money by working. You're right. I'm really feeling like I didn't look more carefully when we were still dating. I'm mad at myself. But I didn't expect that you were having an affair with a colleague. It's a blessing in disguise. I'm so glad it was before we have kids. I would never have kids with you. And like James, you're ugly. I'm worried about the face of our child. I decided that if I wanted to have a child, it would definitely be James' DNA. You're such a horrible woman. Well, it's easy to get alimony, and I'm glad that I've got this much evidence. I'm basically honest, you know. By the way, about the alimony, I'll pay it. But can you please tell my parents that I didn't have any love affair? They're so angry that they won't even listen to me anymore. I'm afraid they'll cut off ties with me and I don't want that to happen. I'm glad your parents are decent, unlike you. But I'm not going to lie to them and you're going to pay for the alimony. You just want your parents to pay for you, right? That's stupid and selfish. You need to clean the mess you've created by yourself. I have the money with me, so don't worry about that. Really, I'm happy to hear that. Since you seem to be counting on it, I'll tell you something. I haven't applied for the accident settlement and the insurance money yet, so they won't be transferred to my account. You're lying. I knew you were counting on it. You're really too obvious. Don't think that just because I'm in the hospital, I can't do anything. I've been consulting my lawyer, had the credit bureau check on behalf of me out for the last few days. I was surprised when I found out that you're living in a luxury apartment now. Why are you doing this to me? I won't be able to make a living. Why don't you ask James to support you? I wonder how much money he's making. You are really stupid to live on the insurance money and settlement money from my accident. Yes, and there's also the division of property. Property division? My savings from when I was single won't be divided to you. What? You have some savings after we got married too, right? What are you talking about? I wish I had. You're the one who spent all our savings after we got married. Stop joking, Thomas. Well, after the divorce proceedings are over, I'm going to ask for alimony from both of you and James. How am I supposed to make a living? Ask that to the handsome James, will you? I won't be your husband anymore soon. If you have a future with James, then you'll be fine. Actually, James doesn't have any savings either. Well, I guess so. He likes to gamble. Aren't you two a good match? He has the same level of intelligence with you. So, can you talk to a lawyer about the rest? It's none of my business anymore. Wait a minute. We lived together for three years. You could have compromised a little more. You have feelings for me, don't you? Where's your compassion? Compassion? How can you say that? If you had been a little nicer to me when I was in the hospital after the car accident, I might have. I've lost all my feelings for you. Well, I have no more regrets. So just sign the divorce papers and pay for the alimony. Thomas, can I talk to you? I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do such things. How dare you contact me? Don't think that I'll forgive you just because you apologized to me. I'm really sorry. I won't do the same mistake ever again. I admit that I had an affair with your wife, so can you somehow reduce the amount of my compensation? Is that the attitude of someone who is remorseful? There is no such thing as a reduction. 
Didn't your lawyer tell you that I had no intention to reduce the amount? I heard about that, but I thought if I talked to you directly, I could at least get a little discount or something like that. Please be nice to me, just like what you did before. Are you stupid? There's no way I'm going to be nice to you. Take full responsibility for what you've done. Why should I be nice to someone who had an affair with my wife? Besides, a content certified letter was sent to my parents' house and my father fell ill because of the shock. That's your fault for having an affair. I'm sorry to hear that. And your father wasn't ill, so he's not in bad shape, right? Another lie. Your father called my lawyer to apologize. What a good person your dad is. I asked him about his health and he said he was in good condition. Lying again? I wonder how you could lie so easily like that. I'll tell you my true feelings, so please consider reducing the amount. I don't want to be together with Cassandra anymore. I want you to help me. Before we lived together, she was kind to me in many ways, but now she doesn't even do the housework. She also wastes a lot of money. I'm surprised that she suddenly changed so drastically. I have to pay for the apartment too, and I'm going crazy. You finally realize it. That's the kind of woman she is. Well, I didn't notice that for three years. Good for you for finding out so quickly. You're very determined, which is really surprising to me. It's not good at all. When I tried to go back to my parents' house, my father was furious with me, so I'm still living with Cassandra. Well, I'm really grateful that you two jerks got together. I'm glad that I'm free like a bird as you can see. I'm sure Cassandra will hang on to you until she finds her next guy, so good luck with that. I'll do anything, so can you give me a break this time? I'm really sorry. I will give Cassandra back to you. There's no way I'll forgive you. I don't want you to return Cassandra to me. You're the one who should do something about it. Live with her for the rest of your life and be happy with her. You two scumbags make a great couple. Oh, and make sure you pay the alimony, okay? I'm going to charge you for it. James and Cassandra paid me the alimony for the affair. They both admitted the affair, so it seems they couldn't escape paying. I contacted the embassy to confirm the truth, and they found out that James was lying. In the end, James was scolded by the embassy. At that time, he again tried to lie for his own sake and got his boss at work and his parents involved. Now it seems that he has no place to belong in the company. It is frustrating that I could not notice these two idiots until now, but I'm relieved that I have managed to put an end to this. I'm now able to move my arm as I went through rehabilitation. It is still inconvenient for me to work hard, but the company is understanding and I'm gradually returning to work. I was shocked when I decided to divorce Cassandra but I'm glad that I left her before she started spending all of my precious money. I don't want to live my life being taken advantage of any longer. When I think about it, James, who took Cassandra away from me, may have saved my life in a certain way. From now on, I hope that my arm will recover as soon as possible so I can enjoy my hobbies for a while and live a leisurely life hoping to meet someone new sooner or later.